Hello, this is Lou Dolphin, and welcome back for Sentinels of the Multiverse, weekly one-shot number 40. Clash of the Titans. Step right up and prepare to be amazed. You'll be among the first to witness the terrible power of the Nine. The Nine what, you say? No less than nine Egyptian gods wielding ultimate power. Who can stand against such odds? The immense, the savage, the eternal Haka? The righteous fury of a fanatic? Fury, sorry, fury of a fanatic, a paranormal investigator harboring a mysterious curse, a kindly old coot, the god of the sun himself. No matter what, folks, this promises to be the battle to end all battles. Place your bets now because it's about to begin. My money's on the Kraken. This one shot was designed by a community member as part of our survey. Cool. So it is the Ennead. Not advanced, standard Ennead, against uh, Redeemer Fanatic, uh, the Eternal Haka, uh, Dark Watch Night Mist, I believe that's Dark Watch Night Mist, Raw Horrors of Two Horizons, and Scholar of the Infinite. <laughs> These are all variants, jeez. In Ruins of Atlantis. Let's start. Our power has seen millennia. You shall fall before the Ennead. My faith is unwavering. My strength comes from grace alone. Sorry, not good with voice acting. I forgot once again to change these settings. Card display long, set that low. Turn that down a smidge, all right. So, Redeemer Fanatic, her power redeem. Fanatic regains one HP, draw one card. She starts with an Absolution. Equipment Relic Limited. When this card enters play, Fanatic regains 1 HP. Power. Select Melee, Fire, or Radiant as this card's damage type. Fanatic deals 1 target, 3 damage of that type. Aegis of Resurrection. Equipment Relic Limited. When Fanatic drops to 0 or fewer HP, restore Fanatic to 10 HP, then destroy this card. Final Dive. One Shot. Destroy a target with 4 or fewer HP other than a character card. Fanatic deals 1 target X projectile damage, where X is the number or is the destroyed target's current HP before it was destroyed. Um, I was, I'm so instinctive to say X is the number of blah, but no. Uh, Prayer of Desperation. One Shot. Draw until you have 6 cards in your hand. Immediately end your turn. And that's it. Uh, this fanatic doesn't have a base power that deals damage, but she's starting with a relic that can deal damage, so maybe we want to put that out there early or hold on to it, who knows. Eternal Haka, Haka of Knowledge, Power, draw one card. You may discard one card with Haka in the title. If you do, draw two cards. She start. He <laughs> starts with Elbow Smash. One shot, Haka deals one target, three melee damage. Rampage, one shot, Haka deals each non-hero target 5 melee damage, and each hero target 2 melee damage. Tayaha, equipment limited, power, Haka deals up to 2 targets, 3 melee damage each. Taumoko, ongoing limited, reduced damage dealt to Haka by 1. So again, this version of Haka doesn't have a damage dealing base power, but he also starts with an uh, equipment card that does provide a damage dealer, just like Fnatic. Uh, Dark Watch Night Mist, Attunement, Power, reveal the top three cards of your deck. Put them back on top of your deck in any order. She starts with Amulet of the Elder Gods, Equipment Relic Limited. The first time Night Mist will be dealt damage each turn, you may discard two cards. If you do, you may redirect that damage to a target of your choice. An Elder Ring, Equipment Relic Limited, Increase damage dealt by Night Mist by one. Power, draw a card, destroy this card. Mistbound, one shot spell, discard two cards. If you do, you may select a deck. Cards from that deck cannot be played until the start of your next turn. Scouring Mists, one shot spell, reveal the top card of your deck. Night Mist deals herself that card's star, or sparkles, whatever. Infernal damage, Night Mist deals up to that card's sparkle numbers, targets two infernal damage each. Put the revealed card into your trash. So this version of Night Mist, her base power also doesn't deal damage, but it was self damage, so I guess it's slightly better. On the other hand, she has much less draw potential, but she can, you know, attune the top of her deck to manipulate things for future plays, such as Scouring Mists. We could know what the sparkle number is on top of her deck and utilize that to our advantage. 
We have Raw, Horus of Two Horizons, Sunrise, Power, draw three cards, discard two cards. He starts with Flesh of the Sun God, Ongoing, Raw is immune to fire damage, Power, Hero character cards are immune to fire damage until the start of your next turn. Inferno, one shot, Raw deals one target, three fire damage, Raw deals up to five other targets, one fire damage each. Solar Flare, ongoing, increase fire damage dealt by Ra by two. At the end of your turn, Ra may deal himself four psychic damage. If he takes no damage this way, this card is destroyed. The Staff of Ra, equipment, limit, equipment relic limited. When this card enters play, Ra regains three HP, increase damage dealt by Ra by one. Power, Ra deals one target, three projectile damage, destroy this card. Yet another variant whose base power is no, lo is no longer dealing damage. And yet another means of getting a power out that deals damage, although that's only a one-shot power. But we do have damage dealers as well as the defensive to or defense to fire card. And the Enya does do a lot of fire attacks, just so we're aware. And then Scholarly of the Infinite, Channel, Power. The Scholar deals himself and one target X infernal damage, where X is the number of cards you've discarded since the end of your last turn, plus one. He starts with an alchemical redirection, ongoing, redirect all damage that would be dealt to hero targets to the scholar, at the start of your turn destroy this card. Expect the worst, ongoing limited, whenever the scholar would be dealt damage reduce that damage to zero, at the start of your turn the scholar regains 2 HP and destroys this card. Flesh to iron, ongoing elemental, at the start of your turn either discard one card or destroy this card, reduce damage dealt to the scholar by 2. And Truth Seeker, ongoing limited power. The Scholar deals one target, two melee damage, draw one card. So this is actually a damage dealing power, contrary to the other four, but he does hit himself for it. Um, that damage can be reduced, so Flesh to Iron would, you know, negate the damage to himself. Or Truth Seeker, instead of hitting himself, he would hit someone else for slightly more and then draw one card, so that's a potential. Alright, so now let's take a look at the Ennead. The power of the Ennead. Set up. At the start of the game, this card enters play. The power of the Ennead side up. The shrine of the Ennead is put into play. The villain deck is shuffled. The nine villain character cards, nine villain character cards, that's the most out of any villain deck, are shuffled and placed beneath the shrine of the Ennead. The top five cards from beneath the shrine of the Ennead are moved into the villain play area. Gameplay. At the start of the villain turn, if there are no cards beneath the Shrine of the Ennead, this card flips. Whenever there are no villain targets in play, the heroes win. So, uh, 33 card deck over here, but the villain, the villain character cards are shuffled into here just because they're a part of that deck. But the Shrine of the Ennead, you know, entered play. Uh, or does enter play, whatever. Whenever a villain target would be destroyed, flip it over instead. This card and all cards beneath this card are indestructible and cannot be removed from the play area by any means. So, start of the game, the nine, the nine villain character cards are placed underneath the shrine, basically they're inside the shrine, and then they pull out a number equal to the number of heroes in play, and then we start with, in this game, five villain character cards. There remain four underneath the shrine of the Ennead, and there are cards in the villain deck that can pull them out. Uh, lots of interesting mechanics here, but in particular, one shot. Move the top card from beneath the Shrine of the Ennead into the villain play area. So that's the way of getting one more. Uh, there's at least one more. I don't know where it is, but there is one more. Somewhere. Oh, Taste of Immortality. One of them plays the top card of the villain deck. The other, all villain targets regain 4 HP. And each of the villain character cards has their own gameplay text based on cards entering the villain trash, based on the particular symbol. And to be honest, I don't know what those symbols are. I, I tend to call them hand, circle, and uh, what's the other one? I guess that's onk. I, I think I've heard that called onk, so that's onk. But we have hand and circle. All right, anyway, the flip side, just in case it becomes relevant, the Ennead and Force. Gameplay. At the end of the villain turn, each villain target regains 3 HP. Whenever there are no villain targets in play, the heroes win. That's the same text on both sides for whenever there are no villain targets in play. Um, so on this side, there's just HP recovery. That's the only difference between the two sides. Uh, on advanced, there's another clause that I think that says increase damage dealt by villain targets by one, and on the front side, it takes the top card of the sh underneath the Shrine of the Ennead and puts it into play, so it really accelerates the game. 
Alright, enough talk. Let's start the game. First five villain character cards. We start with Tefnut. Warrior of the Flood. The first time a hand card is put into the villain trash each turn, this card deals the hero target with the lowest HP to melee damage. He's a nice one. He only hits the lowest HP, and hitting lowest HP is usually bad, but he only reacts to hand cards and he only hits the lowest HP, so... <laughs> Relatively speaking, he's not bad. On the other hand, Osiris, Lord of Silence. The first time an Ankh card is put into the villain trash each turn, this each player discards one card, and each hero deals themselves one psychic damage. So, forced card discards and hitting ourselves. Third one, Isis. Matron of Magic. The first time a hand or Ankh card is put into the villain trash each turn, this card deals the hero with the most cards in play to infernal damage. So, unlike Tefnut, hits the hero with the most cards and also hits, or does, or is more likely to have its effect go off. Tefnut only cared about hands, but Isis cares about hands and Ankhs. And Osiris cares only about Ankhs. Atom, World Finisher. The first time an Ankh card is put into the villain trash each turn, re reveal cards from the top of the villain deck until a circle card is revealed. Play that card, shuffle the other revealed cards back into the villain deck. So, now this is still an Ankh. So, Osiris and Isis and Atom react to Ankhs, and this Ankh reaction is to put a circle card into play. And we haven't had any circle reactions yet, but if, if the next card is set. Oh no, it's not. It's new. It's. Uh, she Who Protects. Reduced damage dealt to villain targets other than Newit by 1. The first time an, a circle card is put into the villain trash each turn, Newit regains 2 HP. Newit isn't offensive, but very defensive, and is going to slow down our ability to hit anyone not named Newit. And she reacts to circles. She's the only one in play that reacts to circles currently, and her circle reaction is to regain 2 HP. Unfortunately, if an Ankh is put into the villain trash, then Atom is going to put a circle into play, which will then be put into the villain trash, and then Newit will regain 2 HP. Alright, so those are the five we're starting with. The first villain card play, Rise to Power. One shot, move the top card from beneath the Shrine of the Ennead into the villain play area, play the top card of the villain deck. So we're not really starting with five, we're actually starting with six. And we have Shu. Breath of the Wind. This card is immune to melee and projectile damage. The first time a circle or hand card is put into the villain trash each turn, each non-hero target regains 1 HP. So now with circles, there's a lot of HP recovery happening on the villain side. New is going to regain 3, everyone else regain 1. And if it's a circle card, uh, it will... Or if it's a hand card, it's going to put a circle into play, although I don't think that will combo. I think that's, you know, the first time either card is put into the villain trash, so it's not going to doubly react. But here we have an Ankh, Death's Grasp, one-shot Ankh. The villain target with the lowest HP deals the hero target with the lowest HP three infernal damage. So that's going to be Night Mist and Shoes dealing that damage. And now there are three Ankh reactions happening. We have Osiris, who is going to force everyone to discard a card and everyone hits themselves for one. We have Isis, I guess I could pull up here. The first time a, or this card deals the hero with the most cards and play two infernal damage, and then Atom, who is gonna put reveal cards from the top of the villain deck until a circle card is revealed. Play that card and shuffle the other revealed cards back to the villain deck. So the order, I don't think truly matters here, because no hero is tied for highest. Um, yeah, I don't really think it matters, we'll just, do it in order. Uh, everyone's going. Everyone's going to be discarding a card right now. Um, I don't think we're going to play Prayer of Desperation. I would like to hold on to Tao Moko. Rampage will be great if we can get uh, Flesh of the Sun God and Imbued Fire at the same time, because then that won't hit the heroes. So I think I'm going to lose Elbow Smash of those four. The amulet's nice for Night Mist. She only has two copies of it in her deck, but this version of Night Mist is really hard to draw cards for, and so funding amulet is really hard. Mistbound is going to be pretty important, though. Pro uh, presumably. Elder Ring's probably the better one. I usually tend to discard Elder Ring because I don't necessarily want Night Mist to damage herself more. And I think Solar Flare is it, because Solar Flare, I don't really like Ra hitting himself for 4 Psychic. 
and increase fire damage dealt by Ra by two. Um, that will only really benefit him this turn, or want the turn he plays it if we don't choose to keep Solar Flare in play, and we don't have a fire damage dealing power. So we'll get rid of Solar Flare. And then Scholar. As fun as Alchemical Redirection is... Well, I guess with Flesh to Iron and Alchemical Redirection, I don't think there's that much irreducible damage. In fact, I don't even think there's irreducible damage on the villain side. Or the environment. I don't think Ruins of Atlantis is irreducible. So maybe Flesh to Iron and Alchemical Redirection will be a good combo. Uh, so I'll get rid of Expect the Worst then. And now everyone's hitting themselves. With no damage augments or redirects, there's nothing to do there. And now this is gonna hit the hero with the most cards in play. And I think we'll hit Fnatic with this. Fnatic tends to like being hit for damage. We're playing a circle. We have Blast of Flame. The villain target with the highest HP deals the hero target with the highest HP for fire damage. So that's gonna be Haka. And now a circle entered play, so Newit regains two, and then each villain regains one, which, or each hero, or non-hero rather, so it would include things like the Kraken on Ruins of Atlantis, but everyone's already at maximum HP, so that doesn't do anything. So it's important to point out that each one of these villain targets is a nemesis of Ra, so they will do one more point of damage to Ra, and Ra will do one more point of damage to each of them. But furthermore, they're actually nemeses of themselves, so if we can redirect damage from a villain target to a different villain target, uh, that damage would be increased by one. And Night Mist is a means of redirecting damage with the Amulet of the Elder Gods. I kept Final Dive, I probably... I don't know how useful it's going to be. The only, only, tar the only targets we'll be able to destroy are the environment targets. Aegis of Resurrection, it's a little bit too early to play this. It's unlikely that Fnatic's going to take 28 HP before her next turn, so I guess Absolution is it. Um, so I'm going to put that out, and I'm I'm just going to try to wail on Newit. So, usually when you have the choice between melee, fire, and radiant, the correct choice is radiant. <laughs> Although that might change depending on, you know, if you have a boost to fire damage. But Newit is the only one with without damage resistance. So let's try to get Newit out first. We draw Brutal Censure, one shot. Fanatic deals one target, two radiant damage, you may draw a card. So now Haka. If we want to have a damage dealer, we should play Tayaha. If you want to play more defensively, we could play Tomoko. If you want to just unleash on everyone, we would play Rampage. Another combination that would be nice with Rampage is Flesh to Iron and Alchemical Redirection. Then the heroes won't be hit at all because they'll all of the damage that would be dealt to hero targets would be redirected to the Scholar, who would reduce that damage by two, which negates the two hero damage from Rampage. So I don't think I'm willing to play that just yet. The thing about... well, one of the things about the villain deck... Um, they do have lots of cards that can destroy hero ongoing cards or equipment cards, so not everything is going to last. But I think we'll put out Tayaha. If we lose it, we can, you know, use Haka's base power, but at least we can hit Newit. And then, since we have a second target, the second priority is most likely going to be Atom. At least in my, in my opinion. Because um, this is going to put a circle into play if an Ankh is played. Alternatively, we could hit Osiris because any time an Ankh is played, each player discards a card, and if he if they keep playing Ankh cards, we're going to lose our hands. Um, but I think chaining an Ankh into a circle is overall worse. The other thing to consider, and I generally don't really pay that much attention to it, but since it's a one shot, I probably should. On their flip side, they still have actions, and they all act at the start of the villain turn. So if we take out Tefnut first. Then at the start of the villain turn, each player discards one card, so not really good to have Tefnut, you know, remain, or be first out. Tefnut's probably the one you want to take out last, so you can save your cards. If we take out Osiris, at the start of the villain turn, destroy the target with the lowest HP other than a character card. So we basically would be destroying the environments, since this hero team lacks hero targets. Hero non-character targets. Uh, Isis... 
Her aunt, at the start of the villain turn, discard the top five cards of each hero deck. Uh, not immediately detrimental, but it would actually negate Night Mist space power, because we could attune the top three cards of her deck, draw the top card, and then we would know two of the cards that would go into the Von Trash, so we wouldn't be able to control her deck for the next turn. Uh, so maybe Isis isn't a big priority right away. She also doesn't do that much damage. When Atom flips, at the start of the villain turn, shuffle the villain trash into the villain deck. So it would be, you know, uh, you, this, this nullifies any villain deck manipulation you can come up with. But furthermore, you know, any card could come into play on the villain turn. So you lose, you lose a lot of control of the villain deck, but you at least don't chain into circles. Knew it. At the start of the villain turn, shuffle the environment trash into the environment deck. Same thing, but it's the environment deck this time. And then Shu, at the start of the villain turn, play the top card at the environment deck. Um, which, well, I guess there are some bad cards that could act at the start of the villain turn. So there's our choices, and I think even though that would shuffle the villain trash into the villain deck, I'm still more willing to take out Atom first. What was the Cyrus's again? That was the other person we were considering. Destroy the target with the lowest HP other than a character card. Um, no, we'll get rid of Atom. Well, we'll start hitting Atom, but if a circle's played, then he'll regain that HP back. Punish the weak, ongoing, limited. Whenever Haka would damage the non-hero target with the lowest HP, increase that damage by one. Whenever Haka would damage any other target, reduce that damage by one. Power, destroy this card. This card is good for making sure we get the lowest HP target out and bad for hitting anyone else. Um, which is good if that's hero targets, because this together with Rampage, now the two damage to hero targets, each hero target is not a non-hero target with the lowest HP, so that damage would be re reduced by one. So we do have some options for a future Rampage. So now Night Mist. So we have the option of putting the amulet out. We could just put it out, so it's out there. But, if we put it out there and then the villain destroys the equipment cards, we lose the amulet and then we can't get it back for a while until we draw the other one in her deck. We also have Mistbound, where we, if we discard two cards, we can stop the villain from playing cards. But that would force us to discard the amulet. And then we have Scouring Mists. We don't know what the top of her deck is, but she'll hit herself for that much sparkle number damage, and then we'll hit that number of targets two infernal damage each. And then we'll discard the card we reveal. So generally, like, people generally don't like Scouring Mists that much. But it does do damage. On the other hand, if we reveal like a 4, we'll hit Night Mist for 4, we'll hit Newit for 2, and then we'll hit 3 other villain targets for 1 each. So Night Mist takes 4 damage to deal a total of 5 damage is the worst case. Best case, she takes one damage to hit Newit for two. On the other hand, we could just not play a card. And we could also skip her power and draw two cards. I mean, attunement is nice and all, but honestly, <laughs> and this is probably why I'm bad with Dark Watch Night Mist, I tend to just skip her play and draw uh, play in power so I could draw more cards for her. So I could potentially feed the amulet. Um, the idea of variant powers is that it changes the way you would want to play a deck. So, the way I'd like to play a Night Mist deck is to get an amulet out and feed it with card draws, but she's lacking that. Um, I don't know, those were two good options, Scouring Mists or Skip Skip. Now I do want to, I think I want to hold on to cards since we lost one, and I think I'm going to skip twice. Yeah, we'll just skip twice, whatever. I'll do it. We draw a call forth, one shot, spell, discard a card, reveal cards from the top of your deck until the discarded card's sparkle relics are revealed, put the relics into your hand, shuffle the other revealed cards back into your deck. This is a sparkle two, so if we had played Scouring Mists, we would have revealed a two. Night Mist hits herself for two, hits New It for two, and hits another villain for one. Not bad. We also get a Heedless Lash, one shot, spell, reveal the top card of your deck, Night Mist deals herself, and one other target that card sparkles infernal damage. Put the revealed card into play or in, into your hand. So unlike most other things that reveal the top card of a deck and then discard it, this one lets you play it or draw it. So it's pretty handy. Heedless Lash is a good card, unlike Skyrim Mist, everyone loves Heedless Lash. 
Um, and at least with attunement, uh, we would actually know what the top card of that. Uh, we would we would know what the top card of the deck is for Heedless Lash. So we could control Heedless Lash on turn three if we do this correctly. All right. So raw, we have fire immunity. We have a one shot that deals damage, and the staff of raw, where he regains three, increases damage dealt by him by one, and then provides a damage dealer. Um, so none of the Inead that are at least out right now inherently deal fire damage, but there are one shots to deal fire damage. Fire Blast would not hit raw, right? It would hit Fanatic. No, it hits Scholar currently. Oops. So that wouldn't help to put the thing out. Um. Mass overheating would destroy equipment cards, and then the villain target with the highest HP deals each hero target three fire. That's a bad one, and there's two of those in the deck, and it's a circle. So if an Ankh is played, it could be played. Sun's Fury, another one that deals each hero target three fire. And then nothing else deals fire. These are... Oh, no, Elemental Storm, sorry. The villain target with the lowest HP deals each hero target one lightning damage, one fire damage, and one cold damage. So we would negate the fire damage here. Uh, this would only hit Scholar. And then Sun's Fury and Mass Overheating would hit each hero target. So that's two, four, six, no, not Blast Flame. Two, four, seven cards out of 21 that uh, Flesh of the Sun God would be useful for. Uh, and four of those are circle cards. And how many circles are there? There are six. So, four out of six chance that if a circle is played, it hits each hero target for three fire. Um, there are five onks. So that's 11 out of 21 cards. So about a 50% chance that a circle is going to be played because of a tum or atom, and it, when a circle is played, it's a four out of s four out of seven. Was that the number? Four out of six. All the circles deal fire, but it's a four out of six chance that it's the one that hits each hero target. Hmm. It would be a bit defensive to play it, but it would at least make sure that we wouldn't be hit by fire damage. I mean, it is early, though, to worry about that. And again, Ra is a nemesis of each of these, so this Inferno would do one more point of damage. It would get past the damage resistance on the other Ennead. But I would like to combo that with the Staff of Ra, if possible. On the other hand, the equipments are a little bit more easily destroyed by mass overheating, since it's a circle. Ongoings can be destroyed. There is one card that destroys ongoings. Actually, it destroys ongoings or equipment cards. So basically, uh, equipments are not too permanent in this game. Uh, well, my instinct is to play and use Flesh of the Sun God, honestly, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to listen to my instincts. So hero character cards are immune to fire damage, so we don't have to worry about fire damage right now. And we draw another one. Great. I always like to believe that if I draw the card I just played, then I played the right card. So we're immune. So uh, scholars immune to fire damage. So the blast of flame isn't going to hit him right now. Uh, nor will the other ones that deal fire damage. Ancient magics might not necessarily hit scholar, but hmm. I'm I'm going to play Truth Seeker because it, it, it lets me deal damage and then I can draw a card. Uh, if I play Flesh to Iron, Scholar discarded one card on the villain turn, so he hit himself and one target t for two infernal damage. With Flesh to Iron, his self damage is negated and he would hit something else for two. But Truth Seeker does the same thing, but he draws a card, whereas Flesh to Iron, he would have to discard a card at his next turn if it's still in play. Or if we want to keep it in play. We'll put out Truth Seeker so we can get more cards for Scholar. Generally, Scholar likes cards. So let's hit New It. We draw a card. 
Know when to turn loose. One shot. Discard your hand. The Scholar deals one target X lightning damage, where X is the number of cards discarded this way. So one of the nice things about Know when to turn loose for Scholar of the Infinite is that uh, the cards discarded by Know when to turn loose deals damage immediately by Know when to turn loose, but then on his power, if we use uh, his base power, I don't remember what it's called, uh, it will also take into account the cards that were discarded. So he would hit himself for a lot, potentially, but he could also double up on the damage. We also get a Don't Dismiss Anything one-shot. Each player may either move one card from their trash to the top of their deck, or put the top card of their deck into play. Uh, this this does combo well with Attunement on Night Mist, so we could control what Night Mist would play. Uh, alternatively, we could stack Night Mist's deck, put a card from her trash on top of her deck, and then she could play it with Heedless Lash, for instance. Um, the other heroes, I mean, it's, it's a nice means of getting cards from your trash back, such as Amulet of the Elder Gods. It's also uh, a means of getting five card plays, four of which are out of turn, so... And, it, and it's fun to have random card plays, so that's a fun card. Alright, so let's see. Toxic Seaweed. Whenever a hero uses a power, deal that hero four toxic damage. At the end of the environment turn, one player may discard their hand to destroy this card. You. So we almost certainly want to get to, to want to uh, bleh, get rid of this card. Which means that one of these five heroes is going to lose their hand. And honestly, I feel like Fnatic is the one who could best stand to lose her hand, because those three cards aren't particularly exciting. But Haka's Punish the Weak and Rampage is a good combo. Taumoko is always a great play. Nightmist, as I've said, it's hard for Nightmist to draw cards, or Dark Watch Nightmist to draw cards, so if she discards her hand, she can't really uh, draw cards that well. Uh, Ra has a duplicate of Flesh of the Sun God, but we would like to get the Staff of Ra out there for a future Inferno, potentially. And Scholar, I mean, if he discards his hand, his uh, channel, that's the name of the power, his channel would take those four cards into account, and he would hit himself and one target for four Infernal damage if we use channel. But we would lose Don't Dismiss Anything and Flesh to Iron and Alchemical Redirection. I'm not particularly excited about No One is Cerned to be honest. So I believe Fanatic's the best choice here. Alternatively, ugh, alternatively, we could just leave it in play and keep hitting it, keep keep getting hit for three damage. Elemental Storm, one shot hand. The villain target with the lowest HP deals each hero target one lightning damage, one fire damage, and one cold damage. So the fire damage is negated. Uh, it doesn't show who this target is, but it's going to be new it and. Uh, just and it is going to have a nemesis bonus on Ra, so Ra will take four, everyone else will take two. And there's no reason to order this, so... So I'm going to do something I don't usually do, but I'm going to fast forward. And now three hand, ca three hand cards react. Tefnut, hero with the lowest, will be dealt two melee. Isis, the hero with the most cards in play, will be dealt two Infernal. Shu, each non-hero target regains one HP. Not as bad as a circle. Let's see, Night Mist is the lowest, and I can't see how many cards she has in play. She has only one, her base power card. Everyone else is tied for two, so we don't have to hit Raw. We could hit Fnatic. And if we hit Fnatic, will she become lowest? No. So the order doesn't matter. So Fnatic. And then healing. I'm also fast forwarding through that. Alright, so she doesn't have cards. If she uses Absolution, she can deal 3 to new it. If she uses Redeem, she can regain an HP and draw a card. Uh, I don't think we need to worry about her HP. The question is, do I value a card more, or do I value hitting for three more? And I want to get rid of Newit as fast as I can, so I'm going to do the damage. Jeremy style. And we draw a final dive. Alright, so... Punish the weak would increase Haka's next damage by one, and then would allow him to use Rampage the next turn, so I'm going to do that. 
and then we'll use Tayaha. So this will do one more point of damage to Nuit, and it will do one fewer point of damage to our next choice, which would probably be a Tum. So four and then one. <laughs> That's the swing of damage there. We draw Haka of Restoration, one shot. Draw two cards, then discard one or more cards. Haka regains HP equal to the number of cards discarded this way. So that's a card that can combo with his base power. All right, we have no idea what's on the top of Night Mist's deck, but we do have a card that lets her draw cards. Call Forth. If she plays it and then discards a four, she can get four relics into her hand. Her deck has seven right now, and it doesn't deal herself damage. And then we can use attunement and then draw a card. So call forth and the discard is a cost of two, but we'll draw two, we'll draw four for a profit of two cards, and then we'll draw a card at her end of her turn. So she'll draw three cards and we'll have a total of eight cards. We do have two cards that are both fours. Mistbound, which we like, and Scouring Mists, which people hate. So Scouring Mists could be discarded for call forth. Heedless Lash, we might want to save for when we know what the top card of her deck will be. Amulet of the Elder Gods is currently, I mean, with, we would like to have more cards for it, which is part of the reason for playing Call Forth. Um, plus it can be destroyed, so let's play Call Forth and maybe we'll draw a second amulet, and then I'll be a little more willing to play an amulet. But we'll Call Forth, we'll discard the four, we draw four cards. Star Shield Necklace. Necklace. Equipment. Relic limited. At the end of your turn, you may discard a card. If you do, Night Mist regains that card sparkles HP. So you have to lose a card, but you can get more HP. Nightmist is actually really good at regaining HP. Tome of Elder Magic, Equipment Limited, Power, reveal cards from the top of your deck until a spell is revealed, put it into your hand, shuffle the other revealed cards back into your deck. I've actually heard a strange thing about this card. Uh, it, like, the way that I intuitively think about it is like backwards, apparently. Uh, but Tome of Elder Magic, I usually play on Dark Watch Night Mist because it lets her draw an additional card uh, on her turn. So you could play a card, use the Tome, draw a card for a profit of one card. Uh, her base, her standard version, I typically will use her base power to draw two cards. And I would rarely use the Tome of Elder Magic. I heard another player say, no, 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 the Tome is good for base Night Mist, it's bad for Attunement Night Mist, because Attunement is so good. I apparently don't know how to play Dark, Wat Night Dark Watch Night Mist. We got another Star Shield Necklace, and we have another Amulet, so there we go, we have our two Amulets. So now we can Attune. Our deck was shuffled, but we had no idea of the order of our deck, so we lost no knowledge. Reveal the top three cards of her deck. We get a Planar Banishment 2. One shot spell, reveal the top card of your deck. Night Mist deals herself that card sparkles infernal damage. You may destroy up to that card sparkles ongoing and or equipment cards. Put the revealed card into your trash. We have a, uh, an enlightenment two. One shot spell, reveal the top card of your deck. Night Mist deals herself that card sparkles infernal damage. One player may draw that card sparkle cards. Put the revealed card into your trash. And we have a call forth one. So Call Forth is slightly less useful because her deck has three relic cards now. The best we could do is play it, discard a card, draw three relics for a profit of one card. Enlightenment, if we play it, uh, we will reveal the top card of her deck. That could potentially be a four. She hits herself for a lot of damage, but then one player can draw that number of cards. And if that's Nightmist, she'll draw four cards for a profit of three cards. And then Planner Banishment, where you can destroy ongoings or environments based on the sparkle numbers. Uh, the Ennead has no ongoing cards, so it would either be hero ongoing cards or we destroy environment cards. So this is a means of destroying environment cards, which we currently are lacking. And actually, Night, or Night Mist and Fnatic are the only two heroes with environment destruction in their deck. So it might be better to draw Planner Banishment. Um... The issue though, if we were going to use like, don't dismiss anything, we would like to chain one of those cards into the other, but Planner Banishment, Enlightenment, and Call Forth are 2-2-1, two, two, and one. those aren't good numbers for Night Mist. So maybe we're not going to don't dismiss anything right now. Might want to wait until we know it's going to be really powerful for Night Mist. Uh, we also don't really have a good card to chain into Heedless Slash. Um, 
I think enlightenment is good. What's in her trash? Would we rather put a trash card on top of her deck? We could put a Scouring Mist's four, and then she could play something that would deal four, but eh. Actually, no, I think Planar Banishment is slightly more useful because it gives us environment destruction. If I put Planar Banishment on top and Enlightenment below that... Actually, no. Planar Banishment and then call forth an Enlightenment. Because I don't know that I'm going to Heedless Lash into an Enlightenment that reveals one. I'd probably just play the Amulet. Um... Yeah, so you could give us the planar banishment in case the environment does so does something dumb. So yeah, we'll put planar banishment on top. We'll basically keep the order intact. So that enlightenment did that assumement did nothing. We draw the planar banishment too. All right. Your character cards are no, no longer immune to fire damage. I think we're still gonna keep that out there though. We're still gonna use that rather. I can now play the staff that would have him regain three HP. He would he would increase his next damage by one, so that Inferno next turn can potentially be good. And I think I'm still going to use Flesh of the Sun God in case there is a bunch of fire damage floating around. It did save us one point of damage this turn. And we draw a Blazing Tornado, ongoing limited, power, raw deals one target, three fire damage. So that's a damage dealing power. That's permanent. Okay... So if I don't dismiss anything, Night Mist is not necessarily going to work well. She would... If she plays the Enlightenment, it reveals a 1. She hits herself for 1. And then someone draws 1 card. I would like it to be draw 4 cards, ideally, so I don't know that I want to do that. Now, it's an optional thing. Night Mist could choose to neither move a card from a trash to her deck or to play a card. Um... Because I could put the Scouring Mist 4 on top, but that doesn't really benefit me because the only card that looks at the top is Heedless Lash and Planar Banishment, and I don't know that I want to do either. So I think I'm going to save that, don't dismiss anything. I think we'll put out Flesh to Iron and potentially Alchemical Redirection the next turn. And we discarded one, we discarded zero cards, so Truth Seeker will do more damage and draw a card. And we draw a Transmutive Recovery, one shot. The Scholar regains two HP, draw two cards. And Grace Under Fire, one shot. The Scholar deals one target X Radiant Damage, where X is the number of non-hero targets in play. This is a really good card when there are six Enyad in play. That's six Radiant Damage for free. Mystical Defenses. At the end of the environment turn, this card deals each non-environment target two energy damage. So so now with Alchemical Redirection, that's going to be a good thing. Um, this is zero to Scholar. It's going to be one to each non-hero thing uh, and two to everyone else. And the order doesn't matter because knew it's not going to die. But now, with Alchemical Redirection, if I put out Alchemical Redirection, Mystical Defenses will redirect all of the hero damage to the Scholar, who will take zero, and will hit each of the Ennead for two. There are actually a surprising number of environment cards, in general, that deal each target of a certain variety two damage. Taste of Mortality, one shot. Move the top card from beneath the Shrine of the Ennead into the villain play area. All villain targets regain 4 HP. It's not... This is... This and the other card that moves cards from the Shrine of the Ennead don't have symbols on them, so we're not going to have reactions this turn. On the other hand, each villain target regains 4, and we get a 7th Ennead. Nephi... Nep... Nep... Nephthys. I almost said Nepicross. Nepicross is <laughs> not Neftis. Nepicross is a P Sentinel's fan. Life Warden. <clears throat> the first time a hand card is put into the villain trash each turn, this card deals each hero target one fire damage. The first time an Ankh card is put into the villain trash each turn, each villain target regains one HP. So with 
Flesh of the Sun God, the fire damage is negated, but this is a third card that does HP recovery based on things, so... And... Yeah, so this is the HP recovery. Once this finishes up, I'm gonna look at her flip side. So on her flip side... At the start of the villain turn, each villain target regains 1 HP, so... Yeah! So even flipping her basically means we're gonna have a fixed HP recovery for this game. Alright, final dive's not gonna do anything, so there's no point in playing it other than, other than if we had wanted to discard it. And I would like to try to get Newit out of play this turn. If I get Newit out of play at the start of the villain turn, shuffle the environment trash into the environment deck. Uh, so with um, Alchemical Redirection, it says redirect all damage that would be dealt to hero targets to the Scholar. With Flesh to Iron, reduce damage dealt to the Scholar by 2. Mystical Defenses won't hit us, and we'll hit the villains for 2 or 1 if it hits if Newit is still in play. So we'd like to get Newit out of play if possible. So how how is the damage going to happen? Uh, Rampage... I might want to not play if I can afford it, because with Alchemical Redirection, I would like to just... Um, I would like for that to go off while Alchemical Redirection is out. Uh, Night Mist... Let's see... Heedless Lash, we know the top card is a 2. She would hit herself for 2, hit someone else for 2. That's the best we can do, because none of her other things deal damage. Um... We can potentially Inferno, and I believe Inferno would be best if I can destroy Newit with it. Um, on the other hand, I don't need to Flesh of the Sun God this turn, so I could Blazing Tornado instead, which would hit Newit for 4 still. So I don't necessarily need to play the Inferno, I could keep it and have the Blazing Tornado out. And then Truth Seeker does 2. And don't dismiss anything could potentially do something. <laughs> or no, we're playing alchemical redirection, so I can't play don't dismiss anything really. All right, so where does that put us? So two damage on scholar, four damage from raw. That's six. Absolution can do three, so that's nine. And Tayaha will do four, so that's thirteen. So we do need to do one more point of damage, unless I play rampage, in which case it will be destroyed easily. So do I want to heed the slash? into the card that I didn't really want to have to play? Well, I guess I will. It's at least a good combo. On the other hand, the two damage can come from Mystical Defenses. So I already chose this, I can't rewind. But let's see, three from Radiant, or three from Fanatic, four from Haka, that's seven. Uh, 4 from Raw, that's 11. 2 from Scholar, that's 13. So yeah, Mystical Defenses would take out Newit. So I don't need to have Night Mist do the damage. Fanatic draws a Divine Sacrifice. One shot. Fanatic deals up to three targets, one irreducible radiant damage each. Damage dealt by those targets is redirected to Fanatic until the start of your next turn. Pretty risky card, but it is irreducible damage, which isn't going to be a big deal once Newit is out. Alright, so... If damage is going to be redirected to the Scholar, then Tamoko isn't necessarily nice. Uh, Rampage, we would like to keep one more turn. Haka of Restoration at least would let me draw two cards. Or I could save it for a future Haka of Knowledge turn to get three cards from it. Uh, I'll put out Tamoko. It's another ongoing card, so it'll at least stay in play. We'll hit new it with this. And then we will have to destroy the mystical defenses at some point. Um, <laughs> on the other hand, it could regain HP by the Ennead. Atom is at maximum HP, that's so sad. Uh, I'll hit the Mystical Defenses, because it's one more point of damage. 
Ground Pound, ongoing. When this card enters play, either discard two cards or destroy this card. Non-hero cards cannot deal damage. At the start of your turn, destroy this card. Good means of stopping damage. I could stop the villain from playing cards. On the other hand, I think that with Scholar redirecting damage and with a future Ground Pound, although I don't know that I'm gonna... Oh no, we're gonna Rampage this next turn, never mind. Uh, we might play Mist Down next turn. So I don't need to Heedless Lash into a card that would draw one. Um... <laughs> I could use the Tome of Elder Magic and I'll draw the spell that I know is on top. And I will lose all sense of knowledge about what's on top of my deck. But I will get more cards, so... The other option is to put the Amulet out, but I'm not going to be taking damage. It will be redirected to the Scholar, and it could be destroyed if the Ennead destroys equipments. I'm fine if the Tome is destroyed, so I'm going to play the Tome. <laughs> and I'm going to use the Tome, despite what people say. We draw an Enlightenment, which we knew was going to happen. Our deck shuffled! We lost all knowledge, and we draw an Elder Ring. An Elder Ring 3. So we don't know any more what's in our, on top of our deck. But we do know there's only two more relics. Just, that was a cool fact. Alright, so Blazing Tornado. Use Blazing Tornado. Hit knew it. Oh, right. I forgot about the Nemesis bonus. Or no, I think I remembered the Nemesis bonus. I forgot the Staff of Raw bonus. We draw a Flame Spike. One shot. Raw deals one target, one fire damage. You may use an additional power this turn. That's good. Very good. So to fund Flesh to Iron, which we do want to keep, I have to discard a card. And as good as No One to Turn Loose is with Scholar of the Infinite, uh, I would rather keep these other cards. And now all damage dealt to hero targets is redirected to the Scholar. Scholar hits something for two. So I don't actually have to hit New It, because the Mystical Defense is going to kill him. Her. Her. And the Mystical Defenses after the next turn is going to be pretty bad. On the other hand, there are more villain targets than non-hero targets. Or, there are more villain targets than hero targets, so Mystical Defense is slightly better, plus it does energy damage. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna hit a Tom. I'm changing my mind about what I'm gonna do. We draw an Offensive Transmutation, one shot. The Scholar deals one target, two Infernal damage. A Scholar <laughs> The Scholar dealt damage this way. No, a target dealt damage this way cannot deal damage until the start of your next turn. So that could control the Mystical Defenses if we wanted to. And to get out of the way, one shot. The Scholar deals each non-hero target one fire damage. Then the Scholar regains X HP, where X is the number of targets dealt damage this way. Interesting. Lots of villain targets, for sure. Leaking Room! Players cannot play hero cards! Increase all lightning damage by two! At the start of the environment turn, destroy this card. No lightning damage on the hero side. I take that back. We discarded the one card that does lightning damage. I think it's possible for the villains to do lightning damage though. So that could be bad. Alright, Newit is hit first. That has to happen. So Newit's destroyed. So now at the start of the villain turn, environment trash will be shuffled into the environment deck. Everything else on the villain side will or the hero side will redirect to the scholar who won't take the damage, and everyone every other villain's gonna take this damage. I just wanna double check about lightning damage. Oh good, elemental storm! One lightning damage increased by two. Good. Whatever. We can't play cards. So that's gonna be a thing. Rise to power, one shot. Move the top card from beneath the Shrine of the Ennead into the villain- Oh, I already read this before, I don't have to reread it. We have now of Jeb. Earthquake Speaker, the first time a hand is put into the villain trash each turn, this card deals the two non-villain targets with the highest HP, two melee damage each. Blast of Flame, one shot circle. The villain target with the highest HP deals the hero target with the highest HP, four fire damage. Four's a lot. 
Oh, it's just one. Okay, never mind. I thought that was to each villain target. That was always going to go to the scholar. And that revealed a cir or that was a circle, so there's only one card left that reacts to circles, and I believe that was Shu. There is one card left underneath the Shrine of the Enyat, and it's the worst one! Until you kill it, then it's the best one! Alright, we can't play cards, so what can we do? Damage? Alright, so now there are... We got the other circle out. There are five circles left. Four, two, uh, five circles, four of them hit each hero target for fire damage. And then there are... What was the one that Atom res responds to? Onks? There are five Onks left. So five Onks, five circles, 17 cards. That's a 10 out of 17 chance that a circle will be played. If a circle is played, it's an 80% chance that it will hit each hero target for three. So we're almost certainly going to be using Flesh of the Sun God this turn. Uh, so does Fnatic want to regain HP, draw a card, or deal damage? I feel like damage is better, especially while we have Absolution, I might as well use it. And again, a Tom is probably the choice when he's destroyed. Shuffle the villain trash into the villain deck. Because if Set comes out, a Tom and Set will basically chain an Ankh into a circle into a hand. Or, er, a, a, sorry, a Tom will play a circle. First time a circle was put into the villain trash, each turn play the top card of the villain deck. So an Ankh into a circle into a random card. So I'm just going to hit a Tom with this. Try to get him destroyed. Consecrated ground, one shot. Destroy an ongoing card or an environment card. Fnatic deals up to three targets, one radiant damage each. So we could destroy the mystical defenses with this. So I'm definitely using Taiha. Unfortunately, now Punish the Weak is going to increase the damage to mystical defenses and reduce the damage to everyone else. So it's four to mystical defenses, two to Atom. And we get Haka of Shielding. One shot. Draw two cards, then discard one or more cards. Reduce the next damage dealt to Haka by two for each card discarded this way. Good defense card. Haka of Restoration. You regain one HP for each card discarded, but with Haka of Shielding, you reduce the next damage dealt to Haka by two. So I feel like Haka of Shielding is a little more potent. And now we're on Nightmist's turn. She can't play cards, and we don't know what's on the top of her deck. She has how many cards in her hand? That's nine cards. So if she skips her power, we draw two cards, she'll get 11 cards. If we use Tome of Elder Magic, we're going to get a spell, which... Uh, slightly less good than drawing two cards, I feel. Although spells are probably a little bit better. We have a lot of the cards we would like to have. Attunement would at least, you know, guarantee that we would know... We would be able to control which of the next three cards we would want to draw. And we would know the top of her deck. I feel like that's probably a little bit better... Because we haven't had a good opportunity to, to get the amulet out. So let's do that. We'll attune. We have Master of Magic 3, ongoing limited. Whenever you play a spell card, Night Mist regains that card's sparkles HP. That's a good card. Tome of Elder Magic, we already know, it's a 3. Oblivion 2, one shot spell, reveal the top two cards of your deck. Night Mist deals each target one of the revealed cards sparkles infernal damage, then deals each non hero target the other revealed cards sparkles infernal damage. Put the revealed cards into your trash. So this is a great damage dealer. It's also going to hit the heroes. <laughs> um, and it would have been nice to have with Alchemical Redirection out, but. It would hit the villains for a lot if we can play it and use it well. So Master of Magic and Oblivion are great. Tome of Elder Magic we already have in play. It's a 3-3 three, three, and 2. And we can potentially heed the slash into one of these. So maybe draw the Oblivion, put the Master of Magic on top and heed the slash into it. And then we have the Master of Magic out. I think that's probably what we're going to do. 
So we'll put Oblivion on top and then Master of Magic below that. And we'll draw the Oblivion. So I'm going to prevent fire damage to us. And draw a card. Another Staff of Raw, so I can destroy the Staff of Raw. Discard a card to keep flesh to iron. Definitely want to do that. Get out of the way and grace under fire, all great. Don't dismiss anything we would like to save. Transmutive recovery, I would like to keep. So offensive transmutation, I probably want to lose uh, because it will only stop damage from one target. So it's not fully nice. I mean, it does deal damage, but the other cards are a little better in my opinion. So I can't play a card. Alchemical redirection destroys itself. So that's what happened there. Truth seeker on a tom. We draw another Flesh to Iron, and the Proverbs and Axioms, one shot. Each player draws one card. Each hero character card may either regain 2 HP or deal themselves 3 psychic damage and use a power. So it's either HP recovery or powers. Environment, Hallway Collapse. When this card enters play, deal each target 3 melee damage. At the end of the environment turn, destroy this card. So that's going to be 5 damage to all the heroes, except... Not as much the Scholar, at least. But it is going to hit the Villains, and it's going to hit Mystical Defenses. So, there. Alright. There's the Heroes. I'm just going to fast forward. And then this hits everyone. Oh, the collapse is destroyed. All right, now, what are you gonna do, Shrine of the Inuit? Not no, Shrine of the Inuit. The Inuit. What are you gonna do? Elemental Storm. One shot hand. The villain target with the lowest HP deals each hero target one lightning damage, one fire damage, and one cold damage. You haven't seen that many Ox in this game. But we're immune to the fire. Akka has a nice card. Scholar takes no damage. Five hands are reacting. One of them, the hero with the lowest is dealt two. Hero with the most cards is dealt two. The two non-villains with the highest HP are dealt two. Each hero target is dealt one fire, so this is negated. Each non-hero target regains one HP. So that includes the mystical defenses, fun fact. So lowest HP is Night Mist, sadly. Most cards in play is Haka or Ra, so this is most likely going to be Haka, because otherwise it gets the Nemesis bonus. Uh, two non-villains with the highest HP are dealt two. That's Scholar and Haka, who will reduce it by one, or two and one, respectively. Uh, we're immune to that, and then HP recovery, so Nightmist is struggling. <laughs> Hit Haka! He has damage reduction, and then this order doesn't matter. Haka takes one fewer, Scholar takes none, and then we're immune to this, and then this HP recovery. All right, so I can now consecrate a ground, the mystical defenses. I don't really want to lose Consecrated Ground for that purpose. <laughs> I could Divine Sacrifice the Mystical Defenses and then Fanatic would die. <laughs> redirect. Damaged up by those targets is redirected the Fanatic, so we'll hit the Mystical Defenses so it redirects the, s the seven villains and the five heroes to Fanatic. So she takes 24 energy damage and dies. And then the remaining damage would go off, so we could still hit villains with that. For 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 a divine sacrifice. Ah. If we encap her, one hero one player may draw a card, each hero regains one HP, select a hero, reduce the next damage dealt to that hero by two. Not particularly exciting. No, I'm not planning on doing that. Relax. I don't really want to lose the consecrated ground, but it would deal with more damage. Uh, there are a lot of potentially bad environment cards we would like to get rid of. 
But yeah. Ah, hold on. The issue with keeping mystical defenses is that Haka is doing one fewer point of damage with that out. Oh yeah, we're going up Rampage, and then I couldn't because we couldn't play cards. So I could still Rampage. If I Rampage... If I hit... If I use Absolution on the Mystical Defenses... Then Rampage would kill the Mystical Defenses and then would hit Atom for 6. I don't know that we want to keep beating up a Night Mist. <laughs> Uh, and then I was going to use Heedless Slash into the card that would help her regain HP. <laughs> oh man, uh, we do have Inferno. We also have a Don't Dismiss Anything. I don't know, because it feels it sort of feels like a waste using Consecrated Ground on the Mystical Defenses. It has 8 HP. If I can destroy it some other way, Hawk is going to do 2 fewer points of damage to a Tum with that out. But if I Rampage and Tayaha, I could still destroy Mystical Defenses. And if we, if we use Absolution on a Tum, that will make up for the 2 points loss. So that's probably what we're gonna do. Night Mist is gonna Heedless Lash, which will... She's gonna be at 5, so hopefully... Oh no! If the Kraken comes out, she'll kill Night Mist. She, yeah, she will kill Night Mist. So maybe I don't want a Heedless Lash. Maybe it'll be a little bit better to play Star Shield Necklace. It does force me to discard a card, but... I could I could keep Night Mist alive, and I could still use Attunement to keep the uh, Master of Magic where I want it to be. In fact, I could have Scholar play it with don't dismiss anything, and it will basically do the same thing. Um, if I'm going to use don't dismiss anything, I probably want to keep the staff of raw, so... And I think that the chances of that hero-wide fire damage cards coming out is even higher since we played a hand, which increases the ratio of onks and circles in the deck, which increases the chances of the circles coming out. Blah 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 blah, so... Yeah, so I think I know what I'm going to do then. So I don't need to destroy Mystical Defenses. And I don't need to Divine Sacrifice, unless I anticipate Atom dying. I think Atom's going to die. So I could use Divine Sacrifice just to deal damage. I don't have to hit three targets, but I can hit the targets that I know will be destroyed. Like, Mystical Defenses, although we do know, like, it will be destroyed, so I guess that's not as useful. Is the one point gonna make a difference? <laughs> Maybe I should just not play a card, how about that? Has Fnatic played a card this game? Oh yeah, she played Absolution. <laughs> she didn't play any of those cards. <laughs> um... Alright, so the question- oh, we do have- no, wait. We were going to use Absolution on Atom. Alright, so that's 3 to Atom. Rampage will do 4. That's 7. Taiha will do 4. That's 11. So it'll be down to 6 damage. 6 HP, rather. So Inferno... is not good enough. It will leave him with 1 point of damage. But the mystical defenses could destroy it. Oh no, never mind. We're destroying the mystical defenses. Wow. I can't pay attention to what's happening. See, this is what happens when you play with too many heroes. There's like five heroes to pay attention to, and I'm trying to plan this entire round. This is how I generally play by myself. Like, once I get to the first hero, I spend like five minutes trying to figure out what to do, and then the remaining turns happen so fast. But we're gonna don't dismiss anything, right? So there's a chance that that one point of damage. Wait, one point of damage? If I'm, do if it was one point of damage, I could have used divine sacrifice. <laughs> Can't rewind. 
Uh, hit Tom. I think that's what we decided on. Divine, so Divine Focus. Ongoing limited. At the start of every turn, you may discard a card. If you do, Fnatic deals the villain target with the highest HP 2 radiant damage. At the start of your turn, Fnatic may deal herself 4 fire damage. If she takes no damage in this way, this card is destroyed. So... And it's it's a good card to play. <laughs> I can't, I feel like that's the best thing, I, or that's the only thing I say whenever I draw a card. Oh yeah, that's a good card to play. All right, let's do it. Rampage. Order's not going to matter. Also, Shu is immune to melee, so it's not going to hit Shu. But that wasn't what I was really worried about. I mean, four damage is still a good number. It could have been six. Although I don't think we could have changed six into six into six. I think it was inevitable that this is going to be four to everyone but the lowest. And yeah, it's going to hit three heroes for one, and it's not going to hit Haka because of Talmoko, and it's not going to hit Scholar because of Flesh to Iron. But... I mean, that was a lot of damage, and we only had to lose three hero HPs for a total of, like, six plus four times seven. That's 34 damage. That's pretty good. And now I can use Taiha, hit the Mystical Defenses for the damage boost, and then Mystical Defenses is gone, and now I can hit Atum. We get another Hako Shielding. Three Hako cards in our hand. Alright, so I don't need to Heedless Lash. We'll put out the Star Shield, and we'll attune. So again, we want to get we want to get Scholar to put the Master of Magic into play. So we want to draw one of the other two cards, and Heedless Lash is probably the choice because the Tomo of Elder Magic is already in play, and I don't really care about that. It is a three though. But we'll draw the Heedless Lash, and we'll put the Master of Magic on top. Draw the Heedless Lash. Now, if I discard a card, I can regain that many HPs. So, I want to keep Mistbound. We're going to play that at some point, I swear. Um, I'll probably lose the other Star Shield Necklace, because even if the Star Shield Necklace gets destroyed, I don't think I'm likely to keep it out or to play it again. This is really sort of a temporary measure to get her back up. And now I can use Inferno to hit Etum. I'm thinking, this is five damage. Scholar can do two for sure. If I do three instead, no, that's not gonna do enough. And now I can deal up to five other targets, one fire damage each. So I feel inclined to hit Shu because Shu missed out on the rampage. So we might as well make sure that he's, you know, there. Um, and then we have these other ones. So I think Osiris is probably the next in priority. Actually, I guess the better question is who do we not really care about? <laughs> Who's the one we want to save for last? I believe Tefnut's flip was the worst, right? At the start of the villain turn, each player discards one card. That's and his front side isn't too bad. He hits the hero target with the lowest HP, which is fit, which is a night miss, but it's only when a hand is put to the villain trash. Whereas Osiris, if an Ankh is put in the trash, each of us discards a card and then we deal ourselves damage. When we flip, when he flips, he will destroy the target with the lowest HP, which could be an environment card or would be an environment target if it's in play. So it is a good way of getting rid of environment targets. Um. Yeah, I think that we're just not going to hit Tefnut. Tefnut's probably the nicest one. So, so that's a lot of damage. Nemesis plus Staff of Ra. If we had imbued fire, that would be four damage. But three isn't too bad. <laughs> and now let's really be immune to fire damage. Drawn to the flame, ongoing, power. Ra deals each non-hero target X fire damage, where X is the number of villain ongoing cards in play. I know what you're thinking. 
There are no villain ongoing cards in this deck, so this card is a dead card. But he would deal each non-hero target zero fire damage, which gets increased by the staff of Ra and increased by Nemesis bonus, so he would hit each of the of the Ennead for two fire damage. Not bad. I would not be able to play Flesh and Sun God, but it's two fire damage. Alright. Flesh to Iron has been working pretty well this game. Scholar is doing pretty well on HP. Uh, generally, I mean, with Scholar of the Infinite, Flesh to Iron is usually this elemental I get out. With Base Scholar, I usually prefer Mortal Form to Energy. But we haven't seen a Mortal Form to Energy or a Keep Moving, which could put a Mortal Form to Energy in play. So Flesh to Iron's been working pretty well. I don't think we're going to put a second one out, and I think that even if we were to lose Flesh to Iron, I wouldn't want to get a, to replace it. I think at this point in the game, we're, he's pretty fine, so I think we're going to lose the other Flesh to Iron. Because the other cards are good. So don't dismiss anything! Whee! So each player may either move one card from their trash, the top of their deck, or put the top card of their deck into play, and almost certainly we're going to put top cards of decks into play. So, unless there's a particularly exciting card we would like to have put on top of our decks. Uh, Inferno would probably be nice, but I think we're, I think I would value a card play more. We know for sure Nightmist is, Nightmist has a... <laughs> Master of Magic on top, which we want to have out. We don't know what Haka has, but... I mean, Rampage would be nice to get back, but... Yeah. Um, I think Fnatic just wants to be able to play something. I guess the really... No, actually, no. Fnatic probably doesn't want to play something, because if she plays End of Days, we're screwed. <laughs> All of our cards will be destroyed. Uh, so she's probably just going to put something on top of her deck, or just not do anything. So yeah, Fnatic's not going to play a random card. End of Days, by the way. Ongoing. At the start of the environment turn, destroy all cards in play other than this card, character cards, and relics, then destroy this card. So the relics would stay in play. The Ennead would stay in play. They're character cards. The heroes stay in play. They're also character cards. But... We lose almost everything else. We do have relics. Absolution is a relic, and Tome of Elder Magic and Star Shield Necklace are relics, and the Staff of Ra is a relic. But everything else will be destroyed. Nailing me, everything. Well, yeah, everything else. So yeah, Fnatic's not going to play the top card of her deck. Um, it's actually a little dangerous for Scholar in case he plays the no win to turn loose because he would discard his entire hand. But that's probably fine. Um, we should probably have Ra go first in case it's an imbued fire. So put the top card of your deck into play. Wrathful Gaze! Whee! Ongoing. Power. Destroy one target with two or fewer HP. <laughs> <laughs> Not particularly exciting. Okay. Well, Night Mist we know what's on top of her deck, so we'll do that. Put top card of your deck into play. Oh, good! Master of Magic. Nice. Fnatic we know is not going to put the top card of her deck into play, so let's select Fnatic. We have one card from your trash to the top of your deck. Is there a card we would like? I guess Brutal Censure. It deals damage and draws a card, so at least since none of these cards are particularly exciting. Put the put move one card from your trash to the top of your deck. Brutal censure. There you go. Aka put the top card of your deck into play. On Dominion! Ongoing. Whenever an environment card is destroyed, you may draw a card. Dominion is also a fun game. Scholar! Put the top card of your deck into play. Proverbs and Axioms! Hey! We get a Brutal Censure. Well, we put the Brutal Censure on top of her deck, so we know what that is. Haka of Battle, one shot. Draw two cards, then discard one or more cards. Increase the next damage dealt by Haka by one for each card discarded this way. If you're forgetting what's happening, each player is drawing a card right now. We draw the Tome of Elder Magic, which we know was put there. 
Living Conflagration, ongoing. When this card enters play, Raw deals one target, two fire damage. Power, Raw deals one target, one fire damage. You may draw a card. Scholar gets another no one to turn loose. Each hero character card may either regain two HP or deal themselves three psychic damage and use a power. So Scholar with Flesh to Iron would only take one psychic damage. Uh, and then could use his power to deal two infernal damage, so that's probably a good good thing. Um, Raw would hit himself for four because of Staff of Raw, so he probably doesn't want to do that. But he could throw the Staff of Raw, and then could play the Staff of Raw to regain three HP. Uh, unfortunately, we would lose the Staff of Raw in case I wanted to use, like, Flame Spike the next turn or something, or Drawn to the Flame, or Living Conflagration. Uh, Night Mist probably doesn't want to take more damage. She doesn't have damage redirection. Haka would hit himself for one because of Punish the Weak, reduce damage, reduces damage by one, and then Talmoka would reduce it by one. Which is good. Because then we could get a tomb out, and then Isis is the next lowest. Uh, and then Fnatic. She could hit herself for three to use Redeem to regain an HP and draw a card, or to do something for three. I mean, Fnatic likes to be at lower HP. <laughs> um. Alright, well, let's see. Scholar, deal self three psychic and use a power. So he deals himself two, reduced by two, and then can someone else. So, no, actually no, let's hit Osiris with this, and now Ra can hit Osiris. There we go. Or not Ra, Haka. Haka will deal himself three, minus two, and we'll use Tayaha. We can now destroy a tomb. I guess if we had done the two to a tomb, we could have spread the damage a bit better. Oops. Oh well. That's fine. And then Osiris takes four. Uh, Night Mist is definitely regaining two. Ra's definitely regaining two. Fnatic, you can either regain two or deal yourself three. Deal yourself three to deal three. It's probably a good compromise. All right, so we can hit Osiris again. And then we can hit Osiris again. So if the Kraken comes out, Osiris is dead. We draw another Don't Dismiss Anything, so we could have another fun turn. And we get a Solid the Liquid. Here's another Elemental, ongoing Elemental. At the start of your turn, either discard one card or destroy this card. Whenever the Scholar would regain HP, increase the amount of HP regained by one. Not immediately useful for this scholar. <gasps> the Kraken came out! Appendage. At the end of the environment turn, this card deals the non-environment target with the lowest HP, 5 melee damage. Bye, Osiris. That was a productive turn. Productive round, rather. Osiris destroys the Kraken. <laughs> so, the Kraken was useful for one turn. Unfortunately, Osiris is... Not going to keep the Kraken in play. If we could keep the Kraken in play, the Kraken would be consistently destroying the villain targets, because we could set it up that way. Uh, unfortunately, we destroyed Osiris. So if we had known that Kraken was coming out, we probably wouldn't have destroyed Osiris, but that's, you know, uh, hindsight. But Dominion that we had played, since the Kraken is an environment card that was destroyed, Haka draws a card, and he draws a Taiha. Etoom shuffles the villain deck, so now we don't know what the villain's gonna do. Environment deck is shuffled, we don't know what the environment's gonna do. Death's Grasp, one shot Ankh. The villain target with the lowest HP deals the hero target with the lowest HP three infernal damage. That's now Fnatic, wow, interesting. So two Ankhs. Isis is gonna hit the hero with the most cards in play, two infernal. Uh, that's again Haka or Ra. Nephthys. 
Each villain target regains one. Order doesn't matter. But we'll hit Haka because he has damage reduction and also Ra has damage increase. Everyone regains one. All right, we're doing pretty well. So again, <laughs> what's this turn going to, what, what, what are we going to do this turn? Is Once I get to Fnatic's turn, I'm so tempted to just look at everyone's hands and then figure out what we're going to do. But like Fnatic here, um, Final Dive's not going to, I don't think Final Dive's going to be useful now. Because any environment target that enters play is going to get destroyed. Sadly. So it is discard fodder, at least. And Divine Sacrifice is probably going to be discard fodder. Consecrated Ground. Environment's not going to last too long. But it can be used. Brutal Censure deals damage, draws a card. Divine Focus. Eh. Might as well play Brutal Censure and then I can draw a card. Um, alright, so these five, Tefnut's definitely the lowest priority. Isis, when she she hits the most cards in play for two Infernal, that's been Haka consistently, which is fine. Uh, and when she's incapped, it makes Night Mist's power less useful, so let's not incap Isis. Jeb, did I say incap power? I meant base power. Deals the two non-villains with the highest HP for two melee. That is going to be hero targets, but... Uh, that's basically been Scholar and Haka because of damage reductions. Is in cap. At the start of the villain turn, each player puts the top card of their hero deck on the bottom of their hero deck. That also nullifies Night Mist's attunement a little bit. Nephthys deals each hero target one fire. Each villain target regains one. When she flips, each villain target regains one. Shu is immune to damage, or melee and projectile, so he's harder to hit. And whenever a circle or hand is put in the trash, each non-hero regains one. When he flips, at the start of the villain turn, play the top card of the environment deck. So actually, no, this could put final dive, this could make final dive more useful. Unfortunately, Haka will never be able to hit Shu. Um... Yeah, so it seems like Nephthys and Shu are the two better options. Nephthys is sort of... You know, it doesn't matter whether she's in play or not. Geb, when he flips, puts the top card of the deck on the bottom. So to keep Night Mist's power a little more useful, we don't want to hit Tefnut or Geb. And if we do Isis, what was Isis again? Discard the top five. Oh, yeah. <laughs> What was what was Tefnut's? What was Tefnut's? Discards. Are, oh right, never mind. So Isis and Geb nullifies attunement, and Tefnut forces card discards. Nephthys deals fire damage whenever her hands in play with an Ankh. Each villain target regains one, but once she's incapped, it's always going to be regain one. And then each non-hero target regains one. When flipped, plays out part of the from deck. Hmm. No, I think we want to get Shu, honestly. No, environment tech checks. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, at least I should probably hit Shu with the non-melee damage. So yeah, whatever. We'll hit Shu. We draw another Divine Focus. I could use her base power to regain one. Nope, I like dealing damage. And we'll hit Shu. We get an Embolden! Ongoing. Play this card next to a hero character card. That hero may use an additional power during their power phase. At the end of that hero's turn, Fnatic may deal them two Radiant damage. If they take no damage this way, destroy this card. It's a good card. If it's played on Haka, he would only take one damage because of Talmoko. If he plays it, if she plays it on Scholar, he can't take the damage, so it would be destroyed. If she plays it on herself, she'll, you know, Lose damage. Lose HP. Um, we could stop them from dealing damage. I mean, I could put out Haka cards. But I could just stop damage from being dealt. And then I don't have to use uh, Flesh of the Sun God. I could do something else. Uh, 
I could Flame Spike into Blazing Tornado and Staff of Ra. That would do a lot of damage. So yeah, let's Ground Pound. I will discard two cards. Uh, I'm going to hold on to the Taiha, but I can lose one of the Haka Shieldings, and I don't think I need the Haka Restoration. And then we'll use Taiha. So... Isis would get the most damage. I mean, that will completely nullify... Uh... Uh, the what's her name? Night Mist's power, but it does do more damage than anything else right now. Isis is considered to have the lowest. Uh, but we do want to just hit Nephthys of these other ones, because Shu can't take the damage anyway. So, just to make sure that Aka does the most damage. We get another Taiha, so I could have discarded Taiha. Alright, so do we know what's the top of your deck? I honestly don't remember. We put the Master of Magic on top and that entered play. I think the Tome of Elder Magic is below that. So it's not necessarily useful. But I think I could just put the Amulet out. We do have a lot of equipments in play. That... There are a lot of options for equipment destruction. Although, well yeah, we do have six. But if I do destroy the Staff of Ra, then it's... Five. I'm gonna put the Amulet out now. I don't need to regain HP because... Non-hero cards can't deal damage. Um, do I want to reveal the top three cards of my deck? Yeah, I want to know what I can potentially do with the Heatless Lash next turn. Mists of Time, Mist Form, and Astral Premonition. I thought the top card was something else. Did something shuffle my deck, or am I just dumb? Hmm. Or did I draw... No, wait. I don't know what happened. Oh, we drew- okay, right, no, never mind. I put the Master of Magic in play, and then I drew the Tome. So no, these three cards we had no idea about. Alright. Mist of Time. One-shot spell. Night Mist deals herself two infernal damage. Switch your trash and hero deck. Shuffle your deck. This is a four. Uh, Mist Form. Ongoing Limited. Night Mist is immune to damage. You cannot play cards or use powers. You may draw an additional card during your draw phase. At the start of your turn, you may destroy this card. Miss Form 3. Astral Premonition 2. Ongoing. Power. Discard one card. If you do, reveal the top two cards of a deck. Put one on top of the deck and one on the bottom of that deck. None of these are really ones I would want to Heedless Lash into, other than potentially Mist Form just to be immune to damage for a round. Uh, and none of these are cards I would really want to draw. Mists of Time, I mean, is a 4. But there's really no need to switch my trash in my deck unless I just want to shuffle my deck faster. This would put 20 cards in my deck. Or 20 cards in my trash if I had a card that would have me regain HP based on the cards in my trash, but no. We don't have that. I could also Heedless Lash into the Mists of Time anyway. And draw that card. And then you have it. Uh, I could draw the Mist Form. Wait, so do we have another? No, we have another Don't Dismiss Anything. I don't know that using Don't Dismiss Anything to put Mist Form in play is a good plan. <laughs> I also don't know that these are necessarily cards she would want to put into play anyway. So maybe not Don't Dismiss Anything. Uh, how many non-heroes? There are five that would deal five damage. Not too shabby. I don't think it's going to get any better unless Set comes out. Um... I don't know. Um... I don't know. <laughs> I just don't know. I think it's better to keep the four on top, right? I'm saying this as if there's people, like, you know, able to respond. <laughs> I guess Enlightenment I could... Oh, if I reveal the four, I could do things. Ooh, actually Enlightenment, with that four, since it's put into the trash anyway, 
Reveal the top card. It's a four. Deal herself four, but discard two, and then she could draw four. So she profits two cards. No. Plays Enlightenment, discards two, draws four. She pro profits one card. But that's not bad. I think I'm just going to draw the Mist form. And we'll put the Mist of Time on top. I don't need to discard for this. Alright, so Flame Spike would deal 3 fire damage to a villain target, and then he could use an additional power. I don't know that I want to throw the Staff of Raw though, but I could still use Wrathful Gaze if I do this correctly, so... 1 plus 2 is 3, and then 3 plus 5... 3 plus 2 is 5. 3 plus 5 is 8, so that's 8 damage. No, not, no one will be at 2 or fewer. Drawn to the flame would hit each of them for 2. Which isn't bad. It's still 10 damage. I mean, Flame Spike with Blazing Tornado and Staff of Raw would be even better. Flame Spike with Blazing Tornado is still 8 damage, so it was potentially a single target. Um. I could put out Living Conflagration and then use Flame Spike the next turn because Living Conflagration will still do one fire, or I could put out Drawn to the Flame and then still use Drawn to the Flame next turn. Or Flame Spike next turn with Drawn to the Flame. I think I'll do that. Like, I would destroy Staff of Raw myself, but I want to be able to have a choice in equipment destruction because we currently have six equipments in play. I think we can see that if I reveal this card. No, we don't see it. But Fnatic has one. Haka has one, Nightmist has three, Scholar has zero, Ra has one. So that's six cards, six equipments. We'd be destroying five. So I would like to keep, I'd like to keep one of them, but yeah. Put out Drawn to the Flame and use it, just to show how it works. Oh my god, you're doing zero fire damage, Lude! Oh, it's two, nice. Order doesn't matter. And we get Excavation, one shot. Put up to three cards from the environment trash on the bottom of the environment deck. You may draw as many cards as you move this way. This is a dead card since Knew It shuffles the environment trash into the environment deck. Alright, as exciting as No One to Turn Loose can be, and it would potentially do five damage. Oh no, I guess I could discard Solid to Liquid. I'm not going to use that. So each player draws a card, each hero character card may either regain 2 HP or deal themselves 3 psychic damage and use a power. We could do this again. I was thinking of putting Transmutive Recovery out, but Scholar doesn't really need the HP as much, and draw 2 cards, he'll draw 1 with Proverbs and Axioms. And we know that non-hero cards can't deal damage anyway, so I could have, like, Raw hit himself. Because, I mean, he's not going to die and do another round of two fire damage. Haka could hit himself for one again, and do damage. And then Fnatic probably is going to regain the HP since she's at nine. She doesn't want to deal herself three, even if she's going to regain one and draw a card. And Night Mist, this is three. Hmm, Light Mist could do the three and discard two and redirect it and use Tome to draw a card. Except we were going to chain into that, weren't we? Oh. Ugh. We're going to heed the slash into a four just to deal four. Or no, we were going to enlighten into the four. That's what we were going to do. Yeah. I guess that's better than redirecting three, is redirecting four. And she could regain 2 HP, which... Yeah, we'll do that. Everyone draws a card! Fnatic draws an End of Days. I read this before, but I'll read it again. At the start of the environment turn, destroy all cards in play other than this card, character cards, and relics, then destroy this card. We get another Dominion for Haka. <sighs> we draw the four. 
which was what I should have rem remembered. Pro Proverbs and axioms, right? Oopsies. Well, she has that now. Summon Staff. One shot. Search your deck for the Staff of Ra and put it into your hand. Shuffle your deck. You may draw a card. You may play a card. And then bring what you need. Ongoing limited. Power. Reveal the top three cards of your deck. Put two in your hand and one on the bottom of your deck. Alright, so Scholar could take the one. And he's going to do two again. This is Infernal. So we'll hit you with it. So now it's... I don't know. Night Mist's play is not going to be what I thought it was, so she could still take the three to redirect three and draw a card. I don't remember what it was. I remember it was- oh, it was the Astral Premonition, so we would get some other spell if I do that. And she would pro she would lose one card, but she has enough cards to fund Amulet of the Elder Gods, so we should probably do that. On the other hand, let's see, so if Haka wants to deal the most damage, it would still be to Isis, but... Um... Because he can't hit Shu. So I should probably have Haka go first, so he could hit Isis for four. And then we'll hit Nephthys again, like last turn. Um. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm just going to have Fnatic regain two. She doesn't have her Aegis, it's in the trash. She started with the Aegis, but we discarded her hand to keep the toxic seaweed from doing damage. But... It's in her trash, so we can't get it right now. If she had the Aegis, I would be more willing to have her go lower. Um... So I'm pretty sure Night Mist is gonna redirect and Ra is gonna take four. He has enough HP. And he can do two fire damage to everything. So if I do that, Isis is most likely gonna flip. Discard the top five cards of each hero deck. Well, it's not like her base power was being useful anyway. Yeah. Because what's the other effect? It heals the hero with the most cards in play? Ugh. Whatever. They all have to die at some point. So we'll discard two to redirect. Um, so we have the tome in play. Although I probably want to keep a tome spare, so we'll destroy or we'll discard the Elder Ring. And yeah, missed form. To redirect it to Isis. Now she can use a power, since since Isis is gonna discard our top five cards of her deck anyway. I'm just going to get a spell. We get a call forth. And Ra, he doesn't have reaction damage, right? No. So Drawn to the Flame is definitely strictly better than Wrathful Gaze. But yeah, we'll do this, because we'll, we'll get rid of Isis and hit everyone else. Yeah. Okay. Down to four. That's the good news. Do, 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 do. And now let's seek the truth. Can't hit Shu with this. This is melee, so we'll hit Nephthys. We draw a mortal form to energy! Ongoing elemental at the start of your turn. Either discard one card or destroy this card. Whenever the Scholar regains HP, the Scholar also deals one target that much energy damage. 
and uh, get another transmutive recovery. So, mortal form to energy coupled with transmutive recovery is nice. Alright, environment, what are you doing? Mystical defenses! It oh, we already read this. Huh. <laughs> oh, but it can't deal damage, right. Okay. And mystical defenses was destroyed by Osiris. Haka draws another punish the weak. Top five cards of each hero deck are getting discarded. Uh, does the order matter? I don't think it does. I don't think anyone reacts based on cards being discarded. I know that Scholar... Oh, let's see it in a second, but we're shuffling the environment deck. We're shuffling the villain deck, shuffling the environment deck, and now we're on the villain turn. Uh, haha! <laughs> Destroy all environment cards, there were zero. Villain target with the lowest HP deals damage, it can't. So it did nothing. Alright, so let's check the Scholar. Okay. He's discarded zero cards, so that didn't count as a discard. Even though we discarded the top five cards of his deck, it wasn't cards that he discarded, so... That's okay. We should take a look at the five cards we discarded. We discarded a Smite the Transgressor, an End of Days, an Undaunted, a Zealous Offense, and a Sanctifying Strike. I'm not going to read those cards since they're not going to enter play. Haka discarded an Elbow Smash, a Taomoko, a Haka of Shielding, an Enduring Intercession, and an Elbow Smash. Night Mist discarded a Mist Form, a Planar Banishment, a Mist Field Recovery, a Mist Bound, and a Heedless Slash. Ra discarded a Blazing Tornado, a Fire Blast, an Excavation, a Summon Staff, and a Scorched Earth. And Scholar discarded a Get Out of the Way, a Truth Seeker, a Grace Under Fire, a Transmutive Recovery, and a Solid to Liquid. So not bad. Nothing there that I was like, oh my god, we discarded that card! No! Alright. Which hands go into play? Deal damage. You can't deal damage. Deal damage. You can't deal damage. Deal damage. You can't deal damage. Gain HP. That's the only thing that happens is HP recovery. We're doing pretty well. I was getting a little scared at the start with all the uh, Enya going into play, but we're doing pretty well. Um, so I think Embolden on Haka might be a fine play. Oh, what are other options? Final Dive doesn't do anything. Divine Sacrifice is going to redirect damage. Divine Focus. Discard cards to deal the villain with the highest HP. Two Radiance. So that's start of each turn. So that's Hakas, Night Mists, Raws, Scholars, Environments, Villains, and then Fanatics. That's seven turns. Uh, but other than Divine Focus, we have six cards plus the seventh you would draw. So we could deal maximum damage with the Divine Focus. We could do a total of 14 Radiant damage across all these turns. It would hit the villain with the highest, which is fine. It would be it would go back and forth between Jeb and Tefnut for a while. Um, if we're gonna have Haka use another power, the issue is well, he has Tayaha and he has Haka of Knowledge, which would just let him draw more cards. It's not really that exciting, in all honesty. Night Mist, uh, it would just be a means of redirection, really, because her base power is now a dead power. Ra could use another power. Um, actually, with Flame Spike and Embolden, you can use three powers. Hmm. You could use Drawn to the Flame. You could use Blazing Tornado, and then you could finish with the Staff of Ra. I don't think I need to keep Flesh of the Sun God out. <laughs> of course, the one turn I don't play it is the turn that the Enya do it. Also, since the Enya shuffle their trash into their deck now, there's th the probability of getting all fire damage is equal each turn. Scholar... Let's see, that's again zero cards. Plus one with Flesh to Iron. So we could use uh, his base power and Truth Seeker, but that's only going to be two damage across two instances. And... He can't take the damage from Flesh to Iron. Or with Flesh to Iron, he can't take Embolden's damage. So Embolden is most profitable on Ra. 
Especially if I can find the uh, imbued fire. Because that would, that would change every hero damage to fire and increase all fire damage by one. So it could improve Drawn to the Flame and it could improve Scholar's Get Out of the Way. As well as this base power. Or Truth Seeker, rather. Uh. Yeah, because Haka doesn't have his other damage either. Yeah, I feel like I'm going to embolden Ra. I think that's better than anything else. Well, actually, no. Divine Focus is going to do 14 damage. I don't know that embolden is going to do the equivalent of 14 damage. And we have a lot of cards that we know we're not going to play with, with Fnatic. I could save embolden for the next turn, which will be even nicer if I could get the imbued fire out. So yeah, I'll Divine Focus. And 3 damage now is better than 2 damage later, I think. Yeah. Uh, so I have to be careful. If I hit Shu, then that's not going... So if I hit Shu with this, then Haka won't be able to hit Nephthys for his maximum potential. Um, I don't even know what Haka's going to play. I feel like we don't really want him to play Haka of Battle, necessarily. Oh, man. I think he's just gonna play Dominion. <laughs> yeah, we'll hit enough this with this. Smite the Transgressor, one shot. Fnatic deals one target, two melee damage, you may use an additional power this turn. It's Fnatic's version of uh, Flame Spike. Alright, so now, let's see. I'm definitely not going to Divine Focus twice. I'm pretty sure. <sighs> it seems like a waste to play Haka of Battle. No, yeah, we're gonna play Dominion. Because the environment card that enters play and gets destroyed would then give Haka more cards for a potential Haka battle the next turn. So we'll hit Nephthys. And we can't hit Shu. So I'll just hit Geb. Because Tefna is the lowest priority. We get another Haka of Battle. So I could have played Haka of Battle, but whatever. Final Dive is not useful. So, don't know what's on top of her deck. Could put the Oblivion out. That's the most damage dealing potential she has. We just don't know what's on top of her deck and we'll never be able to know because we're, we're discarding the top five cards for deck each turn, so. Call forth, there is one relic in her deck. Not useful. Enlightenment, um... No. Yeah, well, Oblivion! So she regains two. Yay! And we reveal two twos. So that's minus one to Talmoko. Minus two to Scholar. Hits everyone else. This is Infernal, and she can redirect one of these. So let's hit the villains first. Like, for, for sure, they're getting hit. So let's just do that. Like, we didn't want to redirect Nephthys because Nephthys was dying anyway. And then Scholar's definitely not taking the damage. <laughs> um, yeah, so Night Mist. I mean, it's only two, but we should be able to win by the next turn. I could have played Mistbound now that I really now that I remember that I actually have that card. But yes, let's discard two cards. Let's get rid of the tome. I don't really want to discard fours. I'll get rid of the call fourth. I have all the relics I need. Uh and this is infernal, so I'll hit shoe. And then this hits everyone else. Mm 
There has been a surprising lack of card destruction in this game. I'm surprised. I've been so scared of losing all of our equipments, <laughs> and that we still have every card that we've ever had. All right, so let's look. Let's draw a spell. We get another Oblivion, and we draw another Mist of Time. So I don't know that I want to do that. Um, but she would regain four. I mean, she's been the lowest HP hero for the longest time. And now she's like almost second highest. Which is funny. Yeah, I'm gonna discard the Mist of Time. I have enough cards now. Discard a card. We're not playing End of Days. Alright, so summon Steph. Summon Staff, even if you have a Staff of Raw in your hand or in play, you might as well play the Summon Staff if you have it. Because it searches your deck for a Staff of Raw, puts it in your hand. Alright, whatever. If you already have a Staff of Raw, who cares? Because you draw a card, and that card might be something you would want to play that you could then play when it says you may play a card. So Summon Staff gets us a Staff of Raw, and we draw a Flame Barrier. Ongoing Limited. The first time Raw is dealt damage by a target each turn, Raw deals that target two fire damage. So if we had Flame Barrier out when Night Mist used Oblivion, Ra would try to hit Night Mist. Which can potentially be nice if we could redirect that damage. Especially if the Oblivion's not doing that much to heroes. It could also be used for the Ennead. But look, they're almost dead. Is there a way we can optimize our damage? I think it's still like the combination of Flame Spike and Blazing Tornado and Staff of Raw that's the most damage dealing. Excavation's a dead card. Flame Barrier is conditional on him being hit by things. Living Conflagration deals damage when it enters play, but he could only deal he can only use one power. We already have a Flesh of Sun got out. Um so Flame Spike is probably the a bit better. Deal one target, one fire. If that's shoe, then drawn to the flame will kill it. And then, Blazing Tornado is equal to Staff of Raw and damage. So yeah, we'll do that. So... Actually... No, we don't have... We don't have things. So we'll hit Shu with that. Can use an extra power. Like, Drawn to the Flame. So yeah. I'm pretty sure we've won. We can potentially win on Scholar's turn too, depending on what Don't Dismiss Anything does. And then Blazing Tornado. So again, Tefnut's the lower priority. Actually with, yeah, we should be able to win even without, well, let's see. We draw another Wrathful Gaze, so. This card a card for flesh to iron. Ooh, actually no one to turn loose would do the I'll do a lot, right? Actually with don't let's lose a transmutive recovery. And then Fanatic discards a card. We'll lose to smite the transgressor. So no one to turn loose will win it for us. One, two, three, four, five, six cards. No one to turn loose, deal one target, six lightning. And then his base power. So we'll do that, so we could show how that works. No one to turn loose! Deals six lightning to Tefnuts! And now I can use his base power. Look, he discarded seven cards since the end of his turn, so he's dealing himself seven minus two. Eight. Oh, right. He discarded seven plus one is eight, but then we can hit Jeb for eight. And we've won! And ultimately, Night Mist finished at the highest HP. Despite being lowest for the first half of the game, she finished at the highest. That's just how Night Mist rolls, yo. Night Mist is pretty good at regaining HP once she's set up. Uh, I probably should have put the amulet out earlier than I did. I was so worried about it being destroyed and not having enough cards to fund it, but I ended up with so many cards I could still fund it even with this version of Night Mist. Uh, we never used Haka's or Ra's base powers. Actually, we never used Fanatic's either. 
So their variants were a little less than stellar. We used scholars a lot, surprisingly. Uh, and I got to showcase the combination of no one to turn loose plus his base power, which is nice. I didn't do a good job with attunement this game. I'm sorry to everyone who loves Dark Watch Nightmist. I just can't really play Nightmist well when I don't have an inherent card draw power. Um, but yeah, we put out Absolution and we used it the entire game. We put out Taiha on the first turn and we used it the entire game. So Fnatic and Haka were basically, you know, going to do what they were going to do for the rest of the game. That was a fun game. That was a, wow, almost exactly two hours. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed this. Please be sure to like this video if you enjoyed watching it, or to subscribe to my channel if you like seeing these kinds of videos, or if I'm doing something that you think is terrible, like, oh my god, Lude, you were so boring in this game, you were monotone, you weren't entertaining at all, this was a boring video. Yeah, please leave comments of that nature. Or, if you really liked what I saw, what, what I saw, what did I see? If you really liked what you saw, that's the more important part, uh, and you want to point out, you know, compliments, feel free to leave that as well. In any case, have a good night.